Watch me build a calendar agent in less than 10 minutes. If you built any workflows or automation on NAN before, you know that it will take a lot longer than that usually to set this up and actually test it and make it work. So how can I build this in less than 10 minutes? Well, I've also built an AI agent that builds other AI agents. And I know that might sound a bit complicated, but don't worry, I've covered it all in a separate video, which I'll link to you here. It covers how I built the whole thing, how it works, and how you can build something similar for yourself. But in this video, we'll put it to the test, prove that it actually does work, and see how fast we can actually build a calendar agent that creates and deletes meetings, that checks my availability, and actually test it live and show you when it breaks and what we need to fix. It's not perfect, but it takes you from zero to a fully testable workflow in less than 10 minutes, which is a game changer if you make AI agents with various different tools. So first, what you're gonna do is go to school.com slash scrapes. You're gonna sign up, you're gonna hit the template library. That's gonna take you to all of our production ready, plug and play, ready to use templates. We're gonna to go to the AI agent builder here and it's got a description of that, the community post, but also then you're just gonna download the template builder here and you're gonna copy the Airtable, which is attached to all of the tools that the which is attached to all of the tools that we're gonna uh, run through here. But today we're gonna be making a calendar agent and you're gonna go into NAN and create a new workflow. You're gonna copy in that JSON file up here and that's gonna open your workflow. And this is our AI agent builder. I'll link to the full video of me testing this, building out different agents and you can see exactly what it is like in action. This one today is just a demo of how quickly you can build it and to prove that the things that actually come out of it, once you test and iterate, they work. So it speeds up your development time. So just quickly, it's made up of a few key series. We're gonna, it's gonna ask us a bunch of questions, which we're gonna answer. It's then gonna come back and dig for more detail. It's gonna pull all the relevant tools that it requires to build that agent and actually build that in a workflow for you. It's gonna pop out at the end with a working calendar agent, similar to this, not quite as built out, but similar to this with all the events, a full prompt in here as well. And we'll go through that now. Once you've opened this, you're gonna make sure you've connected to all the relevant nodes. So connected to your Airtable base in here. And once we're connected, we're just gonna hit test workflow. It's gonna come up with a summary screen of what it does here, which basically builds out our workflow. We're building a calendar agent today. So I'm gonna type in all this information and run through it. So I filled in all the different questions here. What's the goal of your agent? Is to create, update, delete events and check availability in my calendar. Does it need access to tools? Yes, Google Calendar. I'm gonna input natural language queries like put a meeting in for 2 p.m. tomorrow and the expected outputs are creating, updating, and deleting events. I've told it to don't overwrite the book slots and no, we don't require a specific output format. We're gonna hit next and it's gonna come back with a series of questions for us to answer that will basically help build out the prompt, which it's gonna write on our behalf. So first question is asked here, can you specify which event details need to be managed? I'll specify the start time, assume 30 minutes long if no end time, make up the description for me, I'll tell you any attendee emails. I'm gonna answer that and it's gonna fire us the second question for the update functionality. Should the tool support partial updates, as in modifying only specific fields or require complete event details for a So we we'll just say partial updates to any parameters. So we want flexibility in what it updates. When checking availability, do you need the tool to suggest alternative time slots? And that's gonna make up the prompt. So now the tool is running. It's gonna to run to the agent builder, which is gonna check our tools database. And that tools database is filled with all of the different NAN latest tools. And at the moment, we've got 46 different ones. We're filling this in as a community, but Google Calendar is one on the list. So it's going to be able to make up from the JSON there, the Google Calendar tool and give us that at the end. And you can see it now running through and creating the prompt first, and then it's going to select the right tools, create the nodes, and I'll show you what it outputs and we can test and run through and prove that this does work. Right now it's getting the tools from a tools database that's in Airtable. So it's putting a lot of context into the prompt. So it's using quite a lot of tokens. What we're gonna do in the coming week is convert that to a vector database to make it more efficient, more cost-effective. I'm just getting the functionality working at the moment. Okay, so it's just finished running and it's popped up with that our workflow's ready. So we're gonna open it now copy and paste that URL in. 
and we're going to see that hopefully it's uh, named it up here, new workflow AI Google Calendar Assistant. It's put a chat trigger for our natural language query. At the moment, it only supports chat triggers anyway, so I'll put that in every time. It's not made any of the connections because I found that it makes weird connections. Um, so we're just going to have to uh, connect those up automatically. But let's go through each part, the actual events themselves. So this is the expression for let the model define the parameters. So uh, calendar start end, let's let that model define. We obviously need to assign it to the correct calendars. Uh, delete event has chosen that operation correctly. Again, we'll let those be automatically defined and get events. So this is about getting the availability of our calendar. So we'll let these be uh, defined automatically as well. So you can see that all those events are correct. We've just needed to connect them up. Let's connect up the Windows buffer memory for the chat and let's connect up the OpenAI open router node and it's connected it to GPT-4i mini. We'll connect the chat and then we'll go into the calendar agent and actually you can see that it's defined the prompt for us. So we'll switch it to an expression and although the role has not worked correctly, it's sometimes going to be like that. We'll update it. Um, it's put the full prompt output in our critics prompt structure as shown in the previous video. So it has constraints, inputs, role, tools, instructions, conclusions, which are our outputs and solutions. So we'll run through that in a second and show you and actually test it and see what's working and what's not working. But you can see within a couple of minutes, we were able to create a fully prompted AI agent connected to Google Calendar tools that we can immediately start testing. So way, way quicker than usual. And what you can see if you run through the prompt is that it's defined all the different tools. So it's understood from our Airtable database, which tools to grab. It's got the correct tools, create event, delete event, and get events for availability. It's not remembered to do update events. So it's uh, in its functionality, but you know it's a bit hit and miss sometimes. But it has defined all the parameters as well, Calen the required calendar, the start, the end, and the additional fields. I think calendar's predefined, so I'm just going to delete that. So I've got the calendar open here, and it's uh, just got one meeting in tomorrow. So I guess we can ask a couple of things, one to put in a meeting for tomorrow, and one to read the meetings from tomorrow to see if it understands that correctly. So we'll open the chat, send it a message to make sure it's checking correctly. Great, it's returning. What are the events in my calendar tomorrow? So it's not understood that in terms of it's not actually used any of the tools for that query. So we're going to go into the prompt and this is called reactive prompting. And what we're going to do is we've got a prompt to test and we're going to go through. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the instructions. It's broken it down for different types of events. So for checking availability, query the calendar for free slash busy information. I'll just say using the get events tool. And we've said always use the tools provided to get the appropriate information, never make things up. So we'll ask it the same question again. So I asked it another query and I'm, I'm being totally stupid here. The reason it's not performing the actions is it, I've not actually included the input in the prompt here. So I'm going to give it the user query as the input and then it might be able to understand what I'm asking it. So let's give it another go. Let's ask it a question. Okay, great. It's at least tried to get the events this time. So it sent a query to get events, but something's going wrong. Calendar parameters value is invalid. Okay, so there's a couple of things we can see from the debugging here on the input is it's received this calendar value, calendar value called primary. It's selected return all is true, after and before is to the date of tomorrow and the end of the day. So it is actually trying to query the events for the correct period. It's just passing in this calendar value, which is not correct. And we can see in the get events, we've not specified the calendar as a as an input parameter here. So it's not that, it's being inferred by the AI as the primary calendar and that's causing the error. And it's kind of a silly one really, because actually I should have known this when I was setting up this, that the calendar should just be defined by what exists already. So let me reset this value and select the calendar. So that should be defined by the calendar I want to go into anyway. So I'll make sure that that is also the case here. Okay, so calendar all correct. We'll try the message again. Okay, it's running the get events. Let's see what it returns. 
Okay, we've got the test meeting in at 11 till 12 tomorrow. And the description was, this is a test for a demo. And we've got test meeting 11 till 12. This is a test for a demo, so perfect. So with very little changes, we've managed to set up a calendar agent that can get our availability. Let's see if we can create an event. And let's just try and throw a curveball and schedule it in for 11 a.m. tomorrow when we've got a meeting already. And we've got an error here, receive tool input did not match expected schema. It suggests that what we're sending to create an event are not the correct parameters here. So we've got start, end and additional fields. Let's go to our create event down here. So I was having some issues with the buffer memory here and it's confusing it when it's reading the memory. So I've just attached that for now and I've asked it to book a meeting for 11 a.m. tomorrow. It says it's already booked with the test meeting. I can suggest alternative slots. Would you like to schedule the meeting at either 10.30 or 12 p.m. tomorrow, which are slots before and after that meeting? And you can see it's run the get events to do that first. But now we might have an issue because we've not connected to the memory, so it's not going to remember our request. But luckily, it's quite simple. Uh, test 2, book a meeting called test 2. It's going to check the get events again which is okay. And then it's going to create the event and it's returned the calendar event link for us. So we're going to jump into that. It's booked a meeting. It's not applied the title. So we're just going to go back and understand why. And the reason why is because we've not given it the summary, which is the title name. And also let's put a description in there as well. So as I build out the tools database here, what I'll do is I'll add these additional fields so that it will be able to auto populate these. But you can see they're just small edits that we need to make. But the most important thing is it's set the layout, it's set the layout for us and also written most of the prompts. So we just need to refine it and refactor just small things. But it means we can go from zero to testing within less than 10 minutes. So let's ask it to delete the meeting tomorrow called test two. And it's remove that meeting. Let's ask it to schedule again with a description as well. And I'm also going to add a field for attendees and auto populate that. And I'm going to ask it to invite my other email address. So it's going to check the get events first because it's not got the memory. And now it's creating the event and it's put it in the diary. It's invited a guest. It's added the description, but for some reason it's got the time zone completely wrong. So let's add the time zone, ask it again to do the same. It's come back with the information. It's added it into the correct slot. It's invited the guest. And within that short span of time, we've built a complete calendar agent. It's not perfect. It needs iterating on, but you can see how I can go from zero to test and remove all of the painful prompt writing, tool connection, picking the right tools in less than 10 minutes and test immediately and start iterating and making it a workable solution. All you need to do is head to the school, grab the AI agent builder workflow, work template, duplicate the air table. And you can see as a community, we're adding more and more every week of different tools that this will be able to pick up the parameters on. So now I'll be able to go back to the Google calendar node and copy in all of the options that we've just discussed. So whenever somebody else makes that node in the future, it will have a more comprehensive JSON structure. Now, naturally a calendar agent is a relatively simple workflow, but with all of those different tools in there, and answering the questions in depth through the prompts, you'll be able to create whatever agent you want, or at least build a starting point really quickly. One of the most powerful things here is the way in which it lays out the prompts. And you can see that I made very few changes to the original prompt and we've gone a long way with it. Let me know in the comments below what you plan to build with this and we can start adding the tools to the database.